This is Michael Ironside, and you're watching Inside Xbox. Thank you, Michael. And Damn, that dude sounds just like Sam Fisher. Very observant, oh Denny. God. Well done. Now, if you would, I do need just a moment because you know you hear that kind of, that voice, so rich, so so much depth to it. Those gravelly tones. Ryan, <laughs> I'm serious. Can, can we cut the Michael Ironside bromance here and get on to the Last Man Standing achievement and spin ourselves in the mix? I was, I don't know, five minute Michael Ironside bromance video sounds pretty good to me, but I'll we, sit that one out. Thanks. We can so, do that. no, um, if you're still watching uh, on today's Insider Moves, we are going to tackle one of the toughest achievements in Splinter Cell Conviction the Last Man Standing achievement. You have got to survive 20 consecutive rounds without dying in the Last Man Standing co op mode. It is absolutely one of the toughest achievements, and because of that, we would definitely recommend kind of wait to try this achievement until you're comfortable with the game. There's a couple first steps you want to take care of before you even get into the game. Number one, I would say, is upgrade your suit. I don't care what suit you're using. It could be Casual Friday. It could be the standard third echelon suit. But make sure you upgrade, and we would suggest the armor. Don't really care so much about ammunition and gadgets. Having that extra armor, really, really helpful. All right, now, Ryan is really ashamed that we did I am, this. I am. I am very much ashamed. But to get the achievement, set the difficulty to rookie. It hurts my heart, it hurts my gaming pride, but it's true, it's what we did, Rookie is where we went, uh, and, I, and I have to honestly say, as someone who plays all my games on the hardest difficulty, 20 consecutive rounds on Last Stand on Rookie, plenty hard enough. Now choose the first St. Petersburg Last Stand level, and the yep. first thing you do when you get in there, get your gun, shoot out every light. Listen up, and listen carefully. I'm reading hostiles close in on your position, with orders to destroy the EMP. Do what you must, but realize we need that EMP in one piece. All right, now you're protecting a big-ass EMP generator in the middle of the room. Yeah, it's going to get shot up during the course of the, of the battle, but just be careful that it doesn't get too shot up. So the way the EMP health works is that it regenerates up to a certain point. Basically, it starts off at 100%, right? If it goes anywhere between 100% and 50%, you're good. When the wave is over, it'll regenerate back to 100 if it falls beneath 50, it will only regenerate to 50. If it falls beneath 25, it will only regenerate back to 25. Okay, now as each round starts, you want to find the perfect spot and start each round in that spot. Yeah, and after hours and hours of, uh, let's call it research, I believe I have found the best spots to, that we can use. Where by, I, by research, Ryan means dying over and over again. I may have died a, a time or two. Probably not. It's possible, theoretically. Anyway, so the spot I, I think we found that works the best is one person is right up above the EMP, hanging off the ledge here. The other person is directly beneath them, behind some cover. Now, for the top person, what this allows for is people keep running by that spot to get to the stairs on the other side, and you can keep grabbing them off that ledge and earning mark and execute. Yeah, and the spot I chose on the lower level, I'd always face the same wall. I'd know where the guys were going to come from, and I could mark them as they came in. And that's the key here, is you're playing for marks. You're not playing for getting down there with manual kills. So as soon as someone gets a melee kill, let's say I get a melee kill, I have now unlocked an execute for myself and one for Denny. Those two executes are separate. So when the round starts and guys start pouring in, I mark mark my four guys, Denny marks his four guys. That's eight guys. Now I start the execute and Denny presses Y to join in. Now, I used my execute, so I can't set up another one. But I still have mine. But then he has his. So he marks his four targets, and I mark my four targets. Now you might be looking at the screen and going, okay, but your targets are gray. And that's true, they are. That means I cannot initiate the execute, but then he can. So once he does, I press, I can press Y and join in, even though I don't technically have an execute right now. That's another eight dudes. So you're looking at one melee kill can eliminate 16 enemies. Look for your next melee opportunity and keep repeating this same strategy. It is absolutely the key to this entire 20 consecutive round achievement. Now, the last thing I would I would recommend, and this sounds just a little bit silly. Hey, he's striking this directly at me. That's, that's not true. That's not true at all. I've played with other people. Same problem. I have the same problem. And that problem is getting grabbed or getting put down by enemies. If you do not come out now, your friend is dead. <laughs> it's, it sounds stupid, right, to say don't get you know grabbed, don't get shot down by enemies. But my point here is this. Be extra careful. If you get into a situation and you're looking at an enemy and you're thinking, you know what, if I run right up to him, it's I don't know what's going to happen. Don't do it. 
if you go down, if you get grabbed, you have the potential of ruining all 20 consecutive rounds. That's I'm 45 sorry. minutes. 45 minutes. Sorry. It's okay. You can make it up to me. I'll take a raise. All right. Well, now it's time to head into the action, so we'll leave you. That's this Insider Moves. I'm Denny. And I'm Ryan. Thanks for watching Inside Xbox. Good. Bye. Thanks for watching.